not the evangelist, not the imam, not the rabbi, not the minister, or the priest. All tithes and offerings belong to the Lord, and the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath day. To send your tithes and offerings directly to the Lord, log on to www.thenewnationofislam.com. That's thenewnationofislam.com. And look for the icon so that you can send your tithes and offerings by credit card, debit card, and check. You can also send your tithes and offerings by wire transfer directly from your bank account. This is the name on the account so that you can send your funds. Muhammad's Temple, The Jefferson Bank, Fayette, Mississippi, 39069. That's 39069. The routing number is 065-303-056. That's 065-303-056. The account number is 84011. That's 84011. Remember, all tithes and offerings belong to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, are you tired of reading the Holy Scripture and really not understanding what you've read? And if you're reasonably sure, have you ever tested that what you hear, know, that may have a different view than your own? Then let's talk to one another. Let's reason with one another on a scriptural discussion with the Son of Man. A live broadcast Sundays at 12 noon, Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. So why don't you call in and let's discuss the Holy Bible, and if you have one, the Holy Quran, and come to an agreement about the Holy Scripture and their true meaning. So tune in to a scriptural discussion with the Son of Man every Sunday at 12 noon and Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. Right here on TV 33 and 88.1 FM WHPR. You can call in on the air or off the air at 868-0351-868-0342 and 868-4336. Of course, the area code is 313. That's 868-0351-868-4336 and 868-4336. Zero three four two. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, the Truthful, and the Most Just, I greet all of you within the sound of my voice with the greeting words of peace from the Lord of the world, Allah's Salam Alaikum. Uh, brothers and sisters, we have uh, uh, with us uh, today a distinguished uh, guest, and I will uh, read you a brief uh, biography uh, of him. Uh, his name is uh, Professor Lawrence H. Mamiya. And uh, Dr. Lawrence H. Mamiya is the Maddie M. and Norman H. Pashal Davis Professor of Religion and Africana Studies and the Director of the Africana Studies Program at Vassar College. He is the co-author with Dr. C. Eric Lincoln of Duke University of the Black Church in the African American Experience uh, from Duke University Press, 1990. The only national study of black churches done since the Mays and Nicholson study of 1934. The book received the lead review in the New York Times book review and was recommended as one of the books in religion to read 
for 1991 by the Times. <clears throat> the study for the scientific study of religion gave the authors their Distinguished Book Award for 1991. Professor Mamiya received a major five-year grant to do a national study of Islam in the African American experience from the Lilly Endowment Incorporated. He is covering both historical and sociological studies of major African American Muslim groups. He has written numerous articles on the transformations within the nation of Islam. Mamiya was also the lead researcher for Project 2000, a national survey of black churches and Muslim groups that was recently completed. He co-authored Journey Inward, Journey Outward, uh, ITC Faith Factor Project 2000 Study of Black Religious Life Project 2000-2003. Throughout his academic career, Dr. Mamiya has received more than $1.5 million in research grants. His most recent grant of $50,000 was from the Annie E. Casey Foundation of Baltimore to do a study called Transitions from Prison to Community, African American Muslim Mosques and Programs for Formerly Incarcerated Persons. 2006. For this project, he interviewed Minister Louis Farrakhan and Minister Abdullah Muhammad about the Nation of Islam's prison program. He is also a co-author of the History of the Riverside Church of the City of New York, uh, 2004. Professor Mamiya is currently assisting Minister Louis Farrakhan in producing his autobiography. Born and raised in Hawaii, Professor Mamiya received his BA Bachelor of Arts with honors in psychology from the University of Hawaii. He was named traveling fellow for graduating at the top of his Master of Divinity class at the Union Theological Seminary in New York City and he received his Ph.D. in Sociology of Religion and Social Ethics from Columbia University. As a specialist in the study of black religion, he has written widely on black churches, the Nation of Islam, and separatist and militant black religious movements. He was trained as a community organizer with uh, the Chambers Memorial Baptist Church in East Harlem, and as a street worker dealing with street gangs for the National Urban League Street Academy program. He was a civil rights worker with SNCC, and the study, pardon me, and the student interracial ministry in the Southwest Georgia Project. Surviving a series of gun battles and confrontations with the United Clans of Georgia, Mamiya also served as the minister to young adults of the Glide Memorial Methodist Church of, of San Francisco. Working with the Reverend Williams during the Haight Ashbury uh, youth movement and in uh, street uh, riots at Hunters Point, the Fillmore District, and in Oakland. For seven years, he served as a member and chair of the Dutchess County Human Rights Commission, working on cases of police brutality and discrimination in housing and, em and employment. He also served on the board of the Eleanor Roosevelt Institute at Valkeel for six years. 
For more than 32 years, Professor Larry Mamiya has done volunteer work in New York State Prison. Since 1979, he helped to institute a program of weekly student-inmate dialogue groups at the pre-release center of the Green Haven Maximum Security Prison. Other honors uh, are International Fellow of the School of International Affairs of Columbia University, Kent Fellow of the uh, Danforth Foundation, Fulbright Fellow, uh, University of Constance, West Germany, Germany, excuse me, University of Constance, West Germany. Um, I uh, want to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Mamiya, and uh, I will uh, uh, give him the opportunity now uh, to introduce himself uh, to you, and uh, then he and I can dialogue, or I will allow him to question me, and uh, I uh, want Dr. Mamiya to know that uh, I'm uh, telling everyone uh, that will listen that I'm the son of man, and I'm the son of man that the Jesus prophesied of to come at the end of this world's time. I'm that son of man that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, was telling the people that his teaching, the teachings that he was given by Master Farad Muhammad uh, would raise up. And uh, so I don't expect to just get by with just telling you these things. I expect you to uh, approach uh, me with uh, skepticism and that kind of thing because you've had so many uh, people uh, that uh, <laughs> claim to be from God. You had Jim Jones, you had David Koresh, you've had uh, so many people uh, that have did terrible things in the name of being somebody from God. So. introduce himself and then we can begin a dialogue in this public forum here. We're on the internet, uh, we're on the television, we're on the radio, and we also and we also are on a conference line that has uh, approximately 70 people uh, on the conference line. So, uh, I want you to know that I have nothing to hide. And since this is my first time meeting with Dr. Mamiya, I have not spoken with him uh, prior to this. As I told you, we don't put on a show. Um, if if uh, we have an interview, the first time I'm hearing him is the first time you're hearing him. And the first time uh, he's hearing me, unless he's been to our website. Uh, but. Um, Dr. Mamiya, you may press uh, star six on your line, and we welcome you uh, to introduce yourself. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate this uh, chance to talk to you and also to your uh, <clears throat> radio audience, and I believe television audience or internet audience, um, <clears throat> about questions they may have regarding the Nation of Islam uh, or any other questions on black churches or um, African-American religion. Uh, that is my area of specialty. Um, so I welcome this chance to um, address this audience. Okay. Well, uh, when uh, now I want you to understand that I'm not uh, here uh, worrying about my ego, and so I don't really have an ego to bruise when it comes to this uh, this forum. If I did, I would check people before they come in the door and have private conversations with them. Mm -hmm. 
uh, for leading black people in America is uh, not as uh, some people who claim to be leaders. That job is not uh, is not in any way a glamorous position to be in because uh, walking in front does not mean that you are leading. Mm -hmm. To actually lead, it uh, uh, that's what educators are. They are leaders. And they bring you out of ignorance into enlightenment. And it is, it is a, it is a, uh, uh, it is a fairly easy job to bring unenlightened people who know that they are unenlightened. It is a fairly easy job for a qualified teacher to bring that uh, person. I said fairly easy. Um, bring that unenlightened mind into enlightenment. But when you are dealing with people who have been taught unenlightenment, masquerading itself as enlightenment, and you try to lead them out of that unenlightenment, that is the hardest job that any man on the earth could have ever had. And that's the job I have. Mm -hmm. For my people have been taught ignorance from the very beginning of uh, our sojourn here of being taught that we were Negroes. And, uh, and we were just uh, uh, filled with uh, all types of false ideas, false religious doctrine, and false uh, uh, from both worlds, the religious and, I should say, theological and the natural. Taught everything from dinosaurs was on the earth, which never was, to uh, we was going to die and go on and get some reward to some heaven somewhere. And all of that was a lie. And to try to convince them that it's a lie is uh, not futile, but almost an effort in futility. So, um, but that's the job I have. And so if it's not mine, I don't want it. So that's why I talk to people of the uh, that have uh, high degrees of education that can manifest to me whether or not I'm qualified or not qualified for this undertaking. So I uh, uh, did I hear you say you are uh, 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 an expert on the Nation of Islam? Well, I have studied the Nation of Islam and um, uh, continue to relate to members of it. Mm -hmm. So I have some knowledge of it. Um, I don't claim to be uh, the world's expert on it, but I, I, I have, uh, as I said in the past, uh, studied it too. Well, I, I came into the Nation of Islam in 1973. Actually, I joined in uh, around uh, the of seventy two, and uh, and that uh, uh, I went to that Savior's Day of nineteen seventy three. At the time that I joined the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they were getting ready for Savior's Day. And they were uh, uh, getting ready to uh, charter airplanes. And at that time, I think the cost was $150 per person. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I came in right at the time when they were uh, getting ready for that. And uh, so I went to Savior's Day, got my ticket, and went. And... Uh, which I finally got a chance to hear Savior's Day uh, 
of 73 after the messenger wasn't here anymore because it, when you would attend, you could hardly hear nothing because they would be making so much clapping and noise and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I'm uh, the one that he was telling them had arrived, and I didn't know he was even talking about me. But anyway, you get a chance to question me based on what you have. Uh, I think I will let you do that. Uh, let you do the interview. <laughs> so, uh, if you don't mind. Excuse me, gentlemen. Yes. Um, could you have Professor, Professor Mamiya uh, speak up a little bit, please? I think he can hear you, Pro, Pro, Professor Mamiya, Dr. Yes. Mamiya. Uh, they need you to talk a little louder uh, because uh, we we going through these phone lines. Okay. Uh, can they hear me now? How's that, brother? Yes, sir. That's a little bit better. If you could get just a little bit more, uh, a lo- little louder, it'd be... A little louder? Okay. How's that? That's about much better. All right. Okay. Okay. okay uh, uh, Dr. Mamiya, yes. uh, you know there's been a lot of controversy over the fall and rise or rebuilding of the Nation of Islam. That's and, right. Uh, you feel free to question me on what... Uh, whatever you uh, have been told by others, and see where I stand on many of those things. Okay, so you were, you joined the nation in 1973? Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Yes, sir. Um, so in 1975, when Wallace Muhammad took over, um, uh, did you follow Wallace then? No, sir. No, when you did they not. Were, when they were standing up pledging their allegiance to WD, mm-hmm. uh, you, if, if you were uh, if you were there uh, watching it, you noticed all of the regional ministers, uh, Abdul Kareem, uh, Abdul Rahman, uh, even the uh, <coughs> Raymond Sharif. The uh, uh, supreme captain of the nation uh, and the uh, headquarters minister Yusuf Shaw, uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Farrakhan, all of them stood up and pledged their region as uh, the the region that they were over. They pre- pledged their region to the leadership of W. D. Muhammad and. Uh, I uh, was sitting there amazed that they thought that they could pledge my allegiance to somebody. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I never knew nothing about W.D. Muhammad. I didn't really know any history of him. When I read Message to the Black Man, even though uh, the little history of him turning against the messenger when uh, Malcolm went out, he and Malcolm uh, went out, I... Uh, didn't pay that too much attention. I was so elated over learning who uh, uh, black people, who I am, and who white people were, and how to pray and whatnot. So I just didn't hardly pay any attention to that. Uh, w. D. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wallace at that time was called Wallace Muhammad. Right. And uh, he uh, he was a stranger to me. And uh, I was trying to figure out how in the world they call themselves pledging my allegiance to somebody I don't know. And then they said he was, uh, 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 Muhammad Ali said Herbert uh, told him that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is now the same position that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was in. Now that position is held by W.D. Muhammad, Wallace Muhammad. And uh, I said, not with me, it's not, you know. And uh, so I I left. And uh, I tried to tell a lot of the people I, you know, went back and forth to the temple for a while and started trying to talk to brothers and tell them that, uh, you know, what are y'all doing? And uh, But they wouldn't listen. Mm-hmm. So Minister Farrakhan and all of them, they followed W.D., and, right, uh, but in, in 1978, uh, Farrakhan um, 
decided to resurrect the old nation of Islam? Yes, so did I you follow him the, then? Uh, him and uh, at that time, the brother that you used to know as Khalid, mm-hmm. Khalid Muhammad, uh, uh, his uh, name at that time was Harold Tinek, and uh, he was uh, changed his name to Rashidin. And he was a uh, minister of Farrakhan's helper, and they, you know, he started trying to tell me about uh, what Minister Farrakhan was, and I, and I told him that, no, uh, you know, the scripture says, the Lord that keepeth them shall neither slumber nor sleep. And if Minister Farrakhan fell asleep, then he's not the Lord. For he's not supposed to be one that go to sleep on the watch. And uh, he never should have followed W.D. Muhammad. And uh, if he could be tricked so soon into following that man, how can he now say he's not tricked when he was he was uh, in a position to not be tricked when he was closest to the time when the messenger was here, not after you done went to sleep for three years? So, and I'm not saying this in a vacuum. I mean, it's not uh, it's not the first time uh, that I said this. I mean, I invite Minister Farrakhan or any of, anyone that I say something about. The messenger taught us that we should not say anything behind a person's back that we would not say to their face. And so I, you know. So you did not join Farrakhan at that point in 1978? You say, did I join him? Yeah. No, sir. I was already, uh, when Minister Farrakhan was teaching that uh, the messenger taught us psychology, and that uh, as he, as he, I heard him teach this one, he said that uh, uh, the white people gave us uh, a downer by teaching us that we was nothing, that we was Negroes and coons and right. uh, that kind of thing. And so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He gave us an upper to counteract the downer that had been given to us, and he told us that we was God. We was the supreme uh, being, that we are the uh, original people that every other people came from. And he suggested that uh, that wasn't really the truth, but it was said to us to counteract another lie that had been told to us. And that's what him and W.D. Uh, was teaching, and he was teaching that under W.D. Muhammad. Oh, okay. And so I, uh, you know, he, he can't, he, he, he will not deny saying that. And, uh, but anyway, at that time I had, uh, I was going from, from 75 around 19, the, the end of 75, I started on little pamphlet called The Rising Sun, and I used to print them up in my home, and I'd go door to door passing them out, giving them to people, teaching them the true understanding of the Holy Scriptures. Uh, For I had finally accepted the fact that uh, if I was going to uh, uh, find any guidance, it was going to have to be in myself, because I, all of those that I was looking to as my teacher said in the message to the black man, he addressed it to me. He said, you running around looking for someone to bow down to, he said, and you're the God. And so, and I bear him witness. I was looking for someone to follow and couldn't find nobody that uh, was correctly. So I, I just uh, accepted the mission, and I've been doing this ever since. And uh, I've been teaching now for almost 40 years. So you've been doing this alone by yourself? You're yes, not sir. related to any nation of Islam group? No, no group. Just me. Just you. As the messenger told you, he said, he said that he comes out himself to be the champion and lead the righteous to victory. And this is uh, uh, something that I want uh, all of those who claim to believe in the Holy Quran to remember. 
You don't find any other man out in the public condemning other people's religion and telling them that every religion is wrong but the one that he's teaching. The only one you see doing that is me. And I bring people who have differences of religion. I bring them into this forum, and I don't insult them. I argue with them in the best manner, which is with the word of God. And I show them that what they are teaching is wrong. And if I can't do that, then I'm not who I'm claiming to be. The scripture says uh, in the 61st chapter of the Holy Quran, it says that uh, he it is who sent his messenger with the guidance and the true religion, that he may make it overcome the religion, all of them, though the polytheists may be a person. And as uh, up to this point, everyone that I have talked to, whether they was Jewish or Christian, or, and I've talked to quite a few. You go on our website, you will see. I have shown them that their religious doctrine is false. And uh, I stand ready to continue to do that with anyone who will talk to me. And I don't, I'm not bigoted, uh, uh, Dr. Mamiya. I'm, I'm not bigoted with what I do. I, I simply tell people that, if, look, if we're going to discuss uh, our religious beliefs and we are dealing with the same scriptures, which is the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran, if you're going to teach me that uh, you, you read the verses and as you read a verse and you explain it, before you go to another verse, if that verse that you explained, we have a different. If we differ about its meaning, then I can't, I can't let you go on, and you can't let me go on. We have to stop and discuss our difference. And as we do that, then we get at the truth. For many people think that the scriptures can be just interpreted however the reader understand that. But as with you in the books that you have authored, there is many interpretations of the book that you authored. But the best interpretation, if you want, uh, and when I say interpret, the best understanding of the book that you authored, Dr. Mamiya, is to get that understanding that was in your head when you wrote it. And uh, no one should uh, come to you about your own book telling you that they know more about it than you do. And uh, likewise, who knows more about the Holy Scriptures than Almighty God who inspired them? Well, then, if the Scriptures was inspired, then the understanding of them must be inspired too. And if it took uh, inspired men from God, and they didn't come all at once. They came one at a time. Then it will take an inspired man from God to give the understanding of them. And that's who I'm telling you I am. And uh, that's who I tell all of the people that hear me. So you claim to be the son of man? Yes, sir. Um, what signs uh, have um, can you point to? Well, that uh, made you decide that um, you are the son of man. Well, one of the one of the uh, signs is what I just shared with you. You notice you you uh, you heard me say I'm the only man who sat out here and put himself out here to be questioned and argued with by the religious people, and I don't just put myself out here. I offer twenty thousand dollars and my life on what I'm saying. And uh, I don't hear no one else doing that. I, you hear a lot of people claim that they have the truth, but they don't, as the Holy Quran says, they invoke death if you are truthful. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad invoked death. He said that, he said, I will give you $10,000 and my life if you find me lying. And uh, 
I say the same, only I say I'll give you 20. Uh, because I don't just have what the prophets had. I have the understanding that they did not have. Scripture. Well, is that the only sign? Or are there other signs? Oh, yes. The, 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 the Holy Scriptures is full of signs. If you notice. The no, but I'm talking about signs in your life. Not yes. in the Scripture. Uh, when, you, when you talk about signs, you are actually talking about uh, most people don't know that signs is the scriptures. Oh, as, as the scripture says, if thou show them every sign, they will not believe. And the sign, you'll notice we call we call the uh, the different destinations that we uh, get ready to. Like if you try to go from uh, Detroit to California, you have to get on a highway and. Uh, as you travel those highways, you see signs on the side of the highway that help you guide yourself. So if you're trying to get righteous, if you're trying to, as they say, get to heaven, the scriptures are the signs that you must be able to read and understand to help get you there. And uh, just like what I just told you, I'm the first man to ever put it to you like that. Don't nobody else talk like that because they don't understand. And uh, uh, the mere fact that, for instance, you would not believe that uh, if you, you know, if, if you converse with me for any length of time, you would not believe that I have not had a college education. But these, these are signs. All of the things that uh, the people that I converse with that I'm able to, uh, as Jesus, when he was a uh, youngster, people marvel over the fact that he was only 12 and he was in there talking with people who were much older than him, reasoning with them. And so likewise, I went to the 12th grade, and yet I talk to people that are lettered men, and I have no letters. That's a sign. There's many things that are signs. I, I get into uh, uh, one of the most controversial subject matter that you can bring up is religion. And you hear me in this forum with numbers that people could call up to disagree. And I, am, uh, I do what most people would consider a, an insult. But yet no one calls up and uh, accuses me of insulting them or uh, teaching uh, falsehoods about their religion because I don't teach falsehoods. I teach facts. I state facts. It's just like Christianity. When I tell people that Christianity is not the religion that any prophet brought, I can back that up with facts. Open up your scriptures and show me where any prophet taught a religion called Christianity or Judaism. No messenger of God taught any one of those religions. The Christian religion is authored by white people. And that's why the Pope is called the father of the church. Because he is the, 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 the Caucasian is the father of the religion called Christianity. God is not the father of that religion. The Bible itself tells you the first time anybody was ever called Christian was in a place called Antioch. Then what was Abraham and what was Moses? What was David and Solomon? What were they called? They were all Muslims. That's what they were called. As the Holy Quran says, Abraham was neither a Christian nor a Jew, but he was an upright man, a Muslim. And if God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, then God himself is Muslim. And when you look up Muslim, you find that it means one who submits to do God's will. Well, that's the one thing that God can it, do. When I was in the church, they even taught me, it's one thing that's impossible for God to do, and that's to lie. So he has to submit to his own word. So God himself is one who submits to his own will. And so God himself is Muslim. And these are not things that I 
that are hidden, the Caucasian put in the dictionary the definition of Muslim. He put the definition of Islam. That's why it's a wonder how you can read that Islam means entire submission to the will of God. Then you ask him, well, then why didn't you choose Islam? And he don't want to talk. <laughs> but, you know, we, we don't, we are not here to, to run from the world and its false doctrines. We are here to do away with the false doc doctrine just like the sun does away with darkness. That's why Jesus compared my coming. The way they spell son of man actually was improper. It should have been spelled S-U-N more so than S-O-N, even though I am, I am the uh, son of man in spiritual sense because all of the prophets were men. And if we get into spiritual teachings, uh, Dr. Mamaya, uh, you'll notice you are the offspring of the schools that produced you. And uh, so I'm the offspring. The mind that's in me is the offspring of those men that you call prophets and messengers. I am the son of those men. And they said it. They said, for unto us a child is born. So, so where do you place yourself in regards to um, your honorable Elijah Muhammad? I'm, uh, I'm the one that he told you was his Lord. As uh, the, I'm the Lord of those men that you call prophets. Remember, if if uh, if we don't uh, see uh, the understanding, or you remember the messenger said. God is man. Okay. The scripture says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Well, the gospel was with Jesus. The Torah was with Moses. Uh, the Quran was with Muhammad. And that was the word. The word was with those men. And so Jesus, he, uh, when they was accusing him of uh, blasphemy, Jesus looked at him and he said, is it not written in your law? And then he quoted the 82nd chapter of Psalms in the 6th verse. I have said, ye are God. And then he said, then if he called them God unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Then sayest thou of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I'm the Son of God? Jesus was fussing at him, telling him, you didn't say the David and, and Moses was blaspheming when they said they was God. Now you want to come here and tell me that I'm blaspheming because I said I'm the Son of God? And, uh, so the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in his last words, he said, For 43 years I have been teaching that God is man. He said, For 43 years I have been preaching that one day you will wake up to know. You will wake up and agree with me. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. That's in Matthew 12 and 8. Well, if Jesus say the Son of Man is Lord, David, in the 100th chapter of Psalms, David said, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. But now, I'm not the God of the ignorant now. I don't, they don't recognize me. They don't think I'm nothing but a nigger. But the scripture said, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus, Moses, David, and Solomon, and all of them, they recognized me as their Lord. And they prophesied of my coming to you. Solomon didn't say, trust in me. Solomon said, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. And in all your scriptures, acknowledge him. That's what all your ways are. Remember Jesus said, I am the way? Well, if Jesus was the way, well, what was Moses? And what was uh, Isaiah 
all of them were the way. And so, the, the Solomon said, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. David said, wait on the Lord, and be of good courage. So if, if you call yourself the Lord, are you equating yourself with God? Well, the scripture says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. So I don't I don't say nothing different than what the scripture says. I'm not calling myself nothing. I'm telling you what the scripture says about me. But you just told me that you said that you were the Lord. Yes, that's what they told me. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me. He said, he said, you walking around here looking for something to bow down to, and you the God. He was talking to me. You see, so I trust what they say. And since he gave me what the definition of God is, and not that spooky stuff these people have been talking about, God means one who is the possessor of power and force. And what he told me, he said, knowledge is power, and understanding is the force with which you can apply knowledge. If you don't have but little understanding, you have but little force with which to apply your knowledge. But if you have great understanding, depth of understanding, then you have great force with which you can apply that knowledge. And so this is what, uh, if that be the case, then yes, I'm God. You know, but now if you talk about uh, throwing lightning bolts and all of that kind of stuff, if that's what you think God's supposed to do, no, I'm not God. <laughs> so you don't agree with the... Um the belief of the nation of Islam that uh, Master Farad is Allah? Master yes, Fard is I God. believe that Allah appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Yeah. And uh, he came for one purpose. As the messenger said, he said, it is not that Allah, God, will remain among us in person. He said, but he raises up one just like himself, having the same idea. Well, I'm that one that was raised up just like him. You see, that's why the scripture teach you, I beheld one like unto the Son of Man. But see, Master Farad Muhammad was the Son of Man, and I'm the one like him. You see. It's all written. It's nothing happening that wasn't written. Just like Elijah. Elijah, that, that is a prophecy. He was a man prophesied to come. And uh, that's uh, just like me. I was prophesied to come. I mean, I'm not here in and of myself. I was dead. I, I didn't know that I was the son of man. Somebody had to teach me that. Just like any any child, his, his parents name him. He don't name himself. They call me son of man. And... Uh, took me a while to accept who I am, but now I know who I am, and I accept that. And that's why I'm willing to come out here and be questioned and grilled by not uh, crackpots, but by people who are knowledgeable men like yourself. Well, in, in African-American history, uh, you're not the first person to uh, claim to be God or to be uh, a significantly divine figure. Father Divine claimed to be God. Uh, Daddy no Grace claimed to provide access to God, and there have been a whole whole host of other folks. But the way you can bring that, and so way, what makes you think you are so special? The way you can knock them out the box was that Elijah didn't come before them, and they did not bear witness with Elijah. Remember, the scripture, you can't, uh, if you're going to look, remember the scripture says, watch. It says uh, in the 24th chapter of Matthew, uh, I think it's Matthew 24, I'll tell you in a moment. It, Jesus tells the people to watch in chapter 24 in the 42nd verse. He says, watch. Therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Well, the first 
thing you got to know, if somebody tell you to watch, I mean, when I was in the Marine Corps over in Vietnam, they put us on perimeter watch. Mm-hmm. We had to stand watch. Well, it don't do no good to watch if you ain't looking in the right direction. I mean, when, when, we, when they put us out there, we knew what direction to look in. Well, if you're not watching in the right place, then you're not going to know who nobody is. Any imposter can come and tell you something. But if you're looking for the Lord to come, then in the book of Malachi, the scriptures is what you're supposed to be watching. That's where you look for the coming of the ones that God prophesied of. The scripture says in the fourth chapter of Malachi and the fifth verse, it says, Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Well, if Jesus said, you know not what hour your Lord come, well then, that tells you right there, he didn't see himself as Lord. And he was talking about the coming of the Lord. Well, how are you going to look for the Lord to come if you don't look for Elijah first? Well, Elijah is supposed to usher in the Lord. That's according to the scripture. So Elijah came and he told the whole world. He said, this teaching, the, the teaching he was teaching, he said, this teaching will rise a powerful son of truth. So then the Lord couldn't come from no place but out of the nation of Islam. And you notice they had a counterintelligence program in America to stop that from happening. They didn't want no black messiah to rise up. J. Edgar Hoover and them had a COINTEL pro, that's what they call it. Counterintelligence. Most people don't even they hear that term and don't even know what it's saying. Counterintelligence. It means somebody, whatever you do in the way of your intellect, they try to do something to counter your intellect, to try to stop your mental ability from succeeding to do or to accomplish what you're seeking to accomplish. That's what was uh, going on in, in the people who the FBI put in the nation of Islam to try to run try to run anyone who was sincere away. But they couldn't run me away because I believed in the word of God. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I didn't see him like other people saw him. I really believed he was God's messenger. So it didn't make me no difference what people did. I was with God's messenger. And so when he felt my presence, he began teaching again. He began reprinting articles. If you go back to 1973, you'll notice most of the Muhammad speech was reprinted. He wanted to make sure that I got what I had missed. And uh, so now I'm here, and uh, I stand out in front of everybody and say these things. I'm not behind no closed doors telling people that I'm the Lord. I'm out here in front of everybody saying and you will never hear no intelligent Caucasian tell me I'm not his Lord. He waiting on salvation just like you wait, just like everybody else. If I don't save him, he don't get saved. Well, the question is, um, if you are who you claim to be, then how many followers do you have? Well, that's not, that's not uh, I don't have but a few. The scripture teaches you that many are called, but few are chosen. And it also teaches you, if you study the history of Jesus, uh, Jesus had 12 and they ran out on him. But yet today they claim that Jesus was uh, their Lord. But if you judge him by how many followers he had, you wouldn't think he was nobody. See, what, uh, what, what the scripture has said was that it says strive to enter in at the straight gate. For straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads unto life, and few there be that findeth it. 
but broad is the way and wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and many there are that go in thereat. You know something about the reproductive system of man. I know you do. And you know that most of the life germs that you release up into the mother, they go in the wrong direction. It's only a few make it up there to that age. But if you don't have very many followers, um, how can you be a threat to the FBI? The FBI don't, uh, uh, I mean, right now they know I'm not a threat to them. I've had FBI come out to my... Uh, I was telling you what was going on when I was uh, being produced. The FBI knows now. They, they, they know I'm not no threat to them. They've misunderstood everything about the birth of a Messiah and the, the, what the end of their world would be like. But they thought at the end of their world that they was going to all be murdered. That's why the Ku Klux Klan was so adamant about killing black people and do, doing whatever they could. They, you notice that one cry that has been consistent throughout the history of the Klan is that they were protecting the great white race. And that's what they said. They were protecting. Nobody never asked them, what were you protecting them from what? He, uh, all of them thought that at the end of 6,000 years that they were just going to all be, uh, genocide was going to be committed on them by black people. But that's not, we never in, had that in mind. That's not what the maker of them meant when he told them that after 6,000 years your brother from the east will come and eat you up. Uh, they forgot he told them, your brother from the east will come and eat you up. Uh, so they brought me over here, and now I've eaten up all of their knowledge and understanding. I've eaten up their way of life, and their way of life has not destroyed me. It has not attracted me to the point where I forget God like it's doing them. These people have forgotten all about God. They've forgotten their founding fathers and what their founding fathers warned them against, and now they've fallen victim, and they need someone to heal them, otherwise they're going down. And so that's me. So uh, the FBI visited me before and got out and put their uh, shotguns and stuff in their trunk and let me see them do it. And, I mean, they know I'm not no threat to them. He, uh, the old one told, told me, he said, uh, look, I I know you all uh, law-abiding and you, we want this man and you tell him that he need to get in touch with us. And I just looked at him and told him, yes, sir, I, you know. I mean, I, what he, you know, I knew, I knew that, uh, that what the teachings of Islam is, and he did too. And he, they know what we are about. And so, you know, we, we're we not no threat to nobody. We are a threat to a, a corrupt mind. But I'm not here to destroy flesh. The scripture teaches you that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It ain't never had nothing to do with the white skin. The messenger said, we tell you of his skin, of his color, because you did not know who was up under the color. But we're not after the white man's skin. we after that corrupt mind that we put in him that we are now ready to give the rest of it to you. We didn't give him spiritual insight. We only gave him natural insight. Now, now you claim that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had somehow chosen you? No. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't have nothing to do with choosing me. I was born the son of man. Then no, the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't choose himself. No, no messenger chooses himself. Allah does the choosing. It's just like with people. Uh, uh, I'll show you an example. Your intelligence is not something that you went through no, through no. Uh, uh, your mother and father's system 
picking and choosing how much intelligence you were going to have. You was born with that, and it just it just happened uh, with you. You may have been more intelligent than some of your siblings, but you didn't have nothing to do with that. You see, it's just like me. I didn't have nothing to do with being born the son of man. I was just born the son of man. And, you know, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ain't had nothing to do with me being that. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's job was to teach me who I am. But he, that's all. He wasn't allowed to teach me nothing else because I had to fulfill what he uh, also said. He said that Islam is the black man's nature. Well, if it's my nature then shouldn't nobody have to teach me the understanding of the scripture. I should be able, once I'm awake, just like a child. A child don't have to be taught how to nurse his mother. All she got to do is hold the breath there. She don't have to teach the baby to nurse. The baby automatically knows how to nurse. And that's what the messenger knew that would happen with me. That's why he told me when uh, his saying. He said, if you want to talk to Allah, read the Quran. Now, I had picked up the scriptures many times and had to put them down because I didn't understand them. But when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad finished his mission, which was to raise me, when I picked up the book when he wasn't here no more and I was feeling lost, I did what he said. You want to talk to Allah, read the Quran. And I started opening up the scriptures, and to my surprise, I understood them. I'm not dead now. I'm alive. You know, the scripture gives the definition of death. It says, the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And so when you don't understand, you are dead to that knowledge. So how do you see yourself in comparison to Louis Farrakhan? I'm, uh, I am to Minister Farrakhan as the messenger was to Minister Farrakhan and all the rest of them. I'm their head. And uh, whether they accept me, well, that, you know, that's, not, that's not no surprise that the nation of Islam didn't accept me. The messenger, all of them, they saw that. And they put it in the book. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. That's what they said. And the messenger told him back in the 60s, he said, if, if he be a little black man, he said, you're not going to follow him. You're not going to accept him. They said, oh, yes, we will, dear apostle. He said, no, you're not. And they fulfilled that. I got witnesses. You know, I got witness that. Heard the messenger say that. And uh, she bear witness that they have not accepted me. And uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not doing anything that's not written. You see. So uh, the messenger also warned the nation. He said, if you will not submit, he said, Allah will raise up a nation at will. So the new nation of Islam, I mean, we growing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting down waiting on somebody to come and get with me to do something. I'm doing something already. Do something with it. You know, uh, Dr. Mamiya, you know for, for a fact, if a man can't do something with a few, he can't do nothing with, a, with, a, with many. I mean, it should not take a crowd of people with you. If you have wisdom, it shouldn't take a crowd of people with you to go on and get something done. You notice most of your multinational corporations, the, the ones who got them started, look at Ford Motor Company. That started with one man, with an idea, Henry Ford. And that man took that idea and he uh, went and got a few others with him and got that set up. The, the changes that have been brought about on this planet were not done by many people. It was started with one man with a 
new idea, and an idea that was sound. There's an old saying that the world has. There's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. And you know how you can tell when an idea's time has come? The man that uh, that idea finds its fruition in comes. When a man not only has an idea but knows how to go about making it happen, that idea's time has come. And the idea for a new new world, the time that idea's time has come. That's what I'm here. A new world is a new way of thinking. You see? That's what I bring to the table. I bring a new way of thinking. I make all things new. Most people don't 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 understand what to make something new means. It don't mean that you take away what's there. It means you take what's there and you do something with it that nobody ever else thought of. I'm doing with the scriptures what ain't nobody ever else did with it. I show you how the scriptures define themselves. You notice, I didn't say I was God. I let the prophet say it. Jesus said the Son of Man is Lord. Now, whether you believe I'm the Son of Man or not, you can't say Jesus didn't say that the Son of Man is the Lord. Then David said, know ye that the Lord, he is God. I didn't say that. They said it. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the black man is God. And this is what people didn't understand. I remember once Minister Abdul Kareem said, and, and he didn't hear himself, but I heard him. He said, the messenger said that the black man's mind is like a vice. If you start him off in the wrong direction, it's hard to turn him around. And if you start him off in the right direction, it's equally hard to turn him around. Then he said, the messenger said, but some of us, we kind of wishy-washy. <laughs> and then I said, don't wonder did he hear himself. So the messenger made a distinction between the black man and the rest of us. Well, then that got me to thinking. I said, well, wait a minute. Now, the black nation produces the black man, but this black man is the one that God said he was going to create. He said, I'm going to create a mortal of sounding clay, of black mud fashioned into shape. So when I have made him complete and breathed into him of my spirit, he said, fall down making obeisance to him. Now that's the black man that the messenger was talking about. That man that God said he was going to fashion from one of us. The mind that he would fashion in that man. Okay. Now, the messenger said that that man, you start him off in the right end, it's going to hard to turn him around. You notice, know it wasn't hard for W.D. to get Farrakhan and all of them to follow him in that way that he was going. And they start saying that the messenger wasn't no messenger and all that kind of stuff. Ain't nobody never heard me say no foolishness like that. And when all of them went a different way, I didn't. And you can tell I did. Look how much I've grown in what he taught. As the messenger told me, he said, if you can walk out of what I'm teaching, you will have to make steps on your own. Yeah. But at the time he said that, in 72, I wasn't even in the nation. So he told, he had to add something to that. He said, if you can walk out of what I'm teaching, you will have to make steps on your own. He said, but I don't believe you will be able to walk out of what I'm teaching. <laughs> if I had been there, he wouldn't have said it like that. Uh, because he knew, like any anyone knows that in order to walk out of a teaching, you first have to grow up in that teaching. Just like a baby have to crawl before he can walk. 
before he can walk out of the house, he got to stop crawling around in the house, you see. And so uh, I can go in and out, like Jesus said, the, the shepherd. He said, he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And uh, by me, if any man enter in, he shall go in and out and find pasture. I can go in the messenger's teaching, stay in there, and I can walk out of his and go into Jesus' teaching and be just as at home in Jesus' teaching as I am in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching. I can be just as at home in Muhammad's teaching as I am in uh, Moses and Jesus' teaching because all of them represent the same house. They rooms in the same house. As David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, you know ain't no house got just one room. House got many rooms in it, got many doors in there. The messengers of God is referred to as the everlasting doors. That's right. And I go in and out of all of their teachings, and I, I'm at peace, and I'm, I'm at home. In it. I'm in the scriptures like a fish is in water. I'm right at home. You see? And so that's just, uh, that's something that you don't hear nobody else able to even make those kind of comparisons. Every time I open my mouth to say something, you discover that it uh, it gives you a new way of, it evokes new thoughts in your head concerning old things. For the scriptures are old, but the thoughts that I'm sharing with you about the scriptures, they are new. I make all things new. It's just like with uh, you, you are a professor in psychology, and uh, if you have uh, those degrees and whatnot, you notice you can talk to anyone from that background because you are from that background. That's how you know that I'm from the same source that Jesus and all of them was from because I can converse with them. <laughs> you know, I, I don't just have the understanding. If you understand one messenger of God, you understand them all. If, if one doctor, if you can hold a conversation with one MD on an intelligent level, you can hold an, a conversation with all MDs. Uh, they are one. That school is one. The messengers of God are one. We are not separate. That's like many people say, well, when did you die for anybody? When did you die? Whatever you did to the least of my brother, the prophet, you did that to me. I had been in the days of Jesus teaching what I'm teaching, you'd have done to me what you did to him. Because I'm teaching what he was teaching. It's just like I, I hear Caucasian people, they don't try it too much no more, try to tell me that they wasn't responsible for what happened in slavery. And I tell them, you was there and I was there. You was in the genes of your parents, and I was in the genes of mine, suffering. And you was inflicting that on me. So don't try to tell me that you weren't there. We were all there. Now, now I understand why it had to happen now. So I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on no guilt trip. Because actually what we did was fulfill God's word. God's word said that we was going to be a slave. God's word said that we uh, would be uh, serving a nation that would afflict us for 400 years. That's why you get that in the book where it says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. You see? I, too, used to hate my black skin. I, too, used to put on bleach and cream. I, too, used to uh, uh, want to be white. I know how that feels because it happened to me. So 
Well, I don't sit up here and try to pretend that I didn't need the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to teach me to love black. I did need him to teach me to love black. I was hating myself, squeezing my mouth together because my lips was too big. So I don't, I don't, I don't like to pretend that I was something that I was not. I did not always love to be black. I was dead, but I'm not dead no more. And that's why I can understand what my people going through because I've been through it. And that's why I can talk to you and not get the big head just because I'm the son of man, because I know what I was, and I ain't far from that now. You know, I don't want to forget what I was. I don't want to forget where I came from. That way I can, as that uh, Rudyard Kipling said, you can walk with kings and yet not lose the common touch. You lose touch with anybody when you forget. But as long as you remember where you come from, then you don't confront people with a holier-than-thou attitude. You remember when you was where they are. So do we have any questions from your uh, radio audience? Oh, they they listening to, to us. That's, that's what I taught our people. This is one thing that all black people need to learn. Matter of fact, not just all black people, all people need to learn. There's a great lesson in uh, if you want to know how to choose leadership. Don't you choose them. Let them get in front of you and argue with each other, and they will choose for you. Just let them argue with each other in front of you. And you will, you will, you know, because in order to really choose a leader, I mean, you are, you are a, a professor. You are a teacher. There's no students that could really uh, uh, adequately question you to determine whether you are a, the most qualified one that's applying for a position. But if other professors get in there with you, and we just listen to you all argue with each other in front of us on many different subjects, you know what question to ask the other one to manifest if he's qualified or not. And when we see how you deal with the other, that will tell us what your qualifications are. For it takes a leader to choose a leader. You notice, when God chose a man, that man was qualified for what to do the job. God didn't make no mistake in his choice. We choose people, and sometimes we are disappointed in our choice. I said sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes we, 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 we hit it on the money. But no more guessing at it. You know, I, that's why I tell our people, look, don't just take my word for it. Put the leaders out here that's leading us. Make us get in a forum. There's some sisters, I think, trying to get that happen. I, I agree. Make us get out here and argue with each other in front of you. And whoever won't show up for the argument, eliminate him from the running. Because if you've been telling us the truth, why are you afraid to come out in the public and say to us what you've been saying in private? Like I said, I ain't on no ego trip. <clears throat> I know. Um, well, I would like to answer any questions your audience has, um, either about the Nation of Islam or any, anything on black religion, um, because I need to uh, end this soon. Okay, well, what is the, uh, I've got a question for you, because you say about the nation of Islam. What is the, uh, what do you mean when you say nation of Islam? What do I mean when I say nation of Islam? What does that mean? Uh, 
Well, it means the organization and movement um, that uh, grew out of uh, the efforts of um, uh, Master Fard Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And well, to spread the word uh, regarding um, uh, a new religion for the black man of America. Well, actually, actually, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the, the Nation of Islam actually did not yet exist. Did not what? He said that the Nation of Islam did not yet exist. <laughs> he said, he asked the question, he asked, what is the birth record of the said Nation of Islam? And he said, the said Nation of Islam has no birth record. It has no beginning nor ending. Well, we do know historically that um, <clears throat> the nation itself has celebrated July 4th, 1930 as its uh, origin when Master Fard Muhammad began um, preaching and speaking to people in their homes in, uh, in Detroit. Well, actually, that's not, that's not uh, what the teachings was. The, the it did not say the nation of Islam's origin was July 4th, 1930. No, sir. That's when Master Farad Muhammad came uh, to America. Well, July 4th, 1930. that's what we call the official history of the nation of Islam in America. No, no. That was the, uh, I'm telling you now, I was in the nation. Now, the, the, the teachings was, that, that, that was not no birth record of us. That was when Master Farad Muhammad came to America, July uh, 4th, 1930. Now, that was the teaching. That, that, that didn't say that's the beginning of the nation of Islam. Because if he had said that was the beginning, then he would have said that the nation of Islam, when was asked what is the birth record of the said nation of Islam, he would have said July 4th, 1930. But he said the nation of Islam has no birth record. And if the nation of Islam has no birth record, then it hasn't been born yet. Except uh, the nation has celebrated July 4th, 1930 as, as its beginning. Well, who, who said that? I mean, if, that's, if you're talking about with Minister Farrakhan, then Minister no, Farrakhan... Minister Farrakhan's nation of Islam. Uh, you can say his, his uh, understanding, but that's not from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad warned Minister Farrakhan. Uh, he said, brother, after I'm gone, don't change the teaching. Now, why do you suppose he said that to him? I don't know. Yeah, he was, the messenger was a prophet, even though he said he didn't call himself a prophet. But he saw these things, and he told Minister Farrakhan, brother, after I'm gone, don't change the teaching. Now, he changed the teachings, and anybody who claimed that the messenger said that July 4th, 1930, was the birth record of the Nation of Islam is lying. No, he didn't say birth record of the nation. He said uh, this was when the nation began in America. I mean, there ain't never been no Nation of Islam outside of America. So to say that when the nation began in America is to say that's when we was born. And that's not so. I mean, look at what's going they, on. And, they, and look at that the, the meaning of the word that, nation that, of Islam. That nation has no birth record. Um, right. Assumes that... Um, from the beginning, no. wherever the beginning may be. No, it couldn't assume that because... But, but to have it start in America uh, is just say is just that uh, this is when um, the organizational movement known as Nation of Islam was created. No, that couldn't be so because in the second chapter of the Holy Quran and the 120... 
the 127th verse, and I'm going to read verse 127 through 128. It says, And when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundations of the house, they supplicated in this manner, Our Lord, accept from us, Surely thou art the hearing, the knowing, our, the hearing one, the knowing one, our Lord, and make us both submissive to thee, and raise from our offspring a nation submissive to thee. Now, if the nation of Islam had already existed before, Abraham would not have been praying for a nation to be raised up submissive to Allah. That's what a nation submissive to Allah is. It's a nation of Islam. That's what Islam means. It means submission to the will of God. A nation submissive to the will of God is a nation of Islam. And if it already existed, Abraham should have prayed, raised from our offspring another nation submissive to thee. But that's not what he prayed. They prayed, raise up a nation submissive to thee which means it didn't already exist. Now, why is Abraham so important? It is because in the beginning of the Bible, in the 15th chapter of Genesis, it says that the sun was going down and a deep sleep fell upon Abram before he received the name Abraham. And he said, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not there, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So the, the slave in America is the one that Abraham was praying for, because that's where he saw his seed being a, a, a slave. And he was praying that from that seed that a nation would be raised submissive to Allah. And that's what the nation of Islam represented. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't, raised the nation, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad raised the foundation that the nation would be raised up on. And that's why he said it has no beginning nor ending. He said, the, what is the birth record of the said nation of Islam? He said, the said nation of Islam has no birth record. It has no beginning nor ending. Well, the scripture teaches you that it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. The first and the last, saith the Lord. So before the Lord come, there can't be no nation of Islam. But when the Lord come, then the Lord is the beginning and the ending. Just like when you lay a foundation, that foundation is incomplete by nature. The, the, when the architect come and the contractor come, I should say that's going to put up that building. Well, now the beginning and the ending of that building just arrived because he's going to start it and finish it. And likewise, I'm the one who built the nation of Islam because you can't say you building something that is submitting entirely to God's will if someone questions you about the will of God and you guessing at it. God's will is expressed in his word. And I'm the only one who understands his word. So I am the beginning and the ending of the nation of Islam. I'm the author and the finisher of the faith. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I do need to go, so um, right. I thank you for uh, inviting me to, to be in your program. And I thank you for graciously accepting that invitation, and I want to extend an open invitation back to you after you go and look into our website and whatnot at uh, thenewnationofislam.com. And uh, you can, uh, because I love to be interviewed by knowledgeable men. Okay. Thank you very much. You have an open invitation, Dr. Mamia. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, I uh, want to uh, uh, say to all of you, you have a, uh, especially you who say you're Muslim, you have a, a, a sign that have been given to you uh, 
uh, and shown to you from Allah in my presence here and what you see me doing that you cannot deny. I'm the first man that uh, stood up here and uh, in this kind of forum allowing people of different faiths and challenging people of different religious backgrounds to come in here. And I don't placate people. I, uh, you know, I'm respectful of people's beliefs. But I question them to show them that their beliefs that they have are not founded in truth, in the scriptures. I'm making the true religion overcome the religions, all of them. Now, if I'm not that one, why am I doing what that one's supposed to do? Now, you come in here and explain to me why you don't accept me. What kind of man or woman are you? You sit up out there and you claim to believe in something. And then when that thing that you claim you believe in, becomes manifest that it's being fulfilled. You say you believe in the Quran. You say you believe in the Bible. And I told you, how do you know whether you believed in it or not when you didn't understand it? Now you're finding out that you didn't believe in it as much as you said you did or thought you did because you're finding out it's saying something that don't agree with what you was believing I'm a, to come in here that say you don't believe in me, that I'm uh, teaching falsehood, or that I'm not uh, the son of man. Come in here and show me why I'm not. Huh? Now, do you think I was discourteous to our guest? I just wanted to show Dr. Mamiya that you can't be you can't be an authority on my house when you don't live there. I can speak with authority on Christianity because I've been, I grew up in Christianity. I've been a part of that house. My whole childhood, up to getting out of uh, uh, junior high school, I was a part of it. I'm not telling you something that I... Uh, heard about Christianity. I grew up in Christianity. You can't tell me about Christianity. Some of y'all done, done uh, uh, deceived people in offering them Christianity disguised as Islam. Sitting up talking about the messenger sitting out somewhere on the mothership. Now that's the same as you sitting up talking about Jesus sitting somewhere waiting to come back here 2,000 years later. You are telling people other than the truth. The messenger ain't sitting on no mother plane nowhere. The messenger has passed away. And as Paul passed away, as Paul said, for me to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The, the mind that was in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ain't going nowhere. It's right here with me. The understanding has increased. His circles have been widened now. But that man, 
That man died back in 1975. Ain't no sense in you coming in here talking about, hey, no, he didn't. The, the messenger said this. He said, brother, one or two words can stop that kind of talk. Tell him, show him to you. Just tell him, show him to you. He said, once you put the cold, chilly hands of death upon me, he said, once death put me to sleep, he said, let me remain asleep. He said, and I'm not aware that I'm asleep, and I don't want to become aware that I'm asleep if I got to come back to that same grave. He said, no. He said, <laughs> he said once I'm dead, he said, once to let me remain there. <laughs> he said, what if everybody would take a vacation in death and then come back? He said, that's what it would be, a vacation. He said, you wouldn't have standing room on the earth if everybody that died came back. And he said, no, that's just the thing that just don't happen. So ain't no sense in you trying to set up running no game on nobody. You can't run that on me. I tell you what the book says. Now, but a mind don't die like that. Just like all of his life, he was gradually returning that knowledge from whence it comes. <laughs> Just like all your life, you've been dropping little pieces of yourself off wherever you went. Yep. Now, he also told us that something worth praying for to live to see the hereafter. He said, because in the hereafter, we will all be at 16. That's what he said. If you could live to see it. So, uh, you know, I, you get a little taste of it now. When you get in your 60s and 70s, being able to run and jump. And, uh, like, you know, people in this world, they don't, you don't hardly see no 60 and 70 year old men and women able to run and jump like children like they used to. But you get a little taste of that now if you live right and. Uh, eat right, Allah let you taste that. You see? Because it's sure coming. I know it's coming. Now, you, you see, I didn't run him off. I was anxious to let him question me, but I had to show him also that I can question you and you can't claim to be an authority on the, the nation of Islam. How you? You don't even know what that means. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not here to, to, to just, uh, you know, you're going to compare me to Daddy Grace and Father Divine and all them people. Them people didn't get out in no public and do what I'm doing. Huh? Jim Jones and nobody else got out in front of you like I'm doing and shut you down. I wish he would have got out of here in the public and let me in. Well, why didn't you go over there? To, because I'm not going to follow him over there to his little dark corner and uh, uh, be accused of disrupting his meeting. Huh? You can't go in people's house and they don't want you there. <clears throat> no. You know that the sun don't force its way into your house. You can shut it out. Just draw the blinds, pull all the curtains, and use the visible light you can keep out. Do you understand? 
but you ain't hiding because there's some invisible light that pass right through you. The sun, see, the sun uh, light go all through you. <laughs> Ain't nothing here. So, so that's the way it is. With me, I don't, you know, I don't try to force myself on nobody. You know, you know, want to know if you can't judge me by how big I am as. As far as my followers go, how many followers I got, that ain't got nothing to do with uh, what, I, what I'm what uh, i capable of. Huh? You know, if, uh, if everybody on the earth turned me down, I want you to remember something. It all started with one before. We're not concerned about if we don't have no bunch of folks with us. Broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many there are that go in there. Many have been deceived. As Jesus said, many shall come to you in my name saying I'm Christ and shall deceive many. And when I asked the man, he trying to come out to you. Many going to come saying they're Jesus. Well, how many people you done met that told you they was Jesus? But you sure done met many people who came to you in Jesus' name. Every church you ever went to. And up there, come out in Jesus' name this, in Jesus' name that. Remind me of that song, brother. Oh, man, I, that song, brother, uh, brought up. If it ain't one thing, it's enough. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to let you hear that song. Now, that brother was saying something in that song. Uh, that if it ain't one thing, it's enough. <laughs> yeah. How many times you done said that? We all have said that. I had never heard that song, and it was back in the 79 and 80. And uh, I had never heard it. But at, in 79 and 80, I wasn't listening to no music or nothing else. I was busy about my father's business. And uh, so, I, I, you know, I just started relaxing and loosening up a little bit uh, back into that kind of thing, music and stuff. You know that. You ask my children, ask my wife, yeah, she'll tell you. I was very serious minded young fella. Hard to get along with. <laughs> uh, but it took that. You know. It took me a while to loosen up and uh um, you know, I listened to music but not much. So I may have heard that song, but it didn't really strike no chord with me. And uh, I want to let you hear, since we're still on, on the air here, I'll let you hear it. Um, All the people who, at times in their lives, 
strike. not the one I wanted. He got this other one. I'm making this song for all the people who at times in their lives feel bad. You know when you feel like even your blues have blues? Give it a one day. It's another Y'all went on strike. I wonder if it's okay if I talk to you this evening. A long time ago, my old grandmother, bless her heart, used to sit me on her knee and pull out her good book. And she said, my son, my child, don't you ever get too grown, too famous, too rich. Good 
start saying, my children, watch out that nobody deceives you. For in the last day, there'll be a lot of tribulation, wars, and famines, and earthquakes in different places on the earth. And there'll be no understanding among people. He said, but as you see these things occurring, don't you become too discouraged. Just lift your hands and because your deliverance is getting near. And he spoke about the proclamation about a coming kingdom or government of God that would eventually take over this earth and rule over the whole earth. And oh, I turn to Daniel chapter 2. And there Daniel describes that this kingdom will not be an earthly kingdom, but it will be ruled by God. And open the book of Revelation and talks about how there will be a land Bring all mankind back to perfection. Ah, uh, some of y'all didn't know exactly what I'm talking about. And Isaiah, Isaiah a long time ago said, Oh, I see old people growing young again. I see lame people running and leaping, just like a gazelle. And blind people will see again. And we won't have to worry about our children going out. You are listening to WHPR 88.1 FM, and you are watching UHF TV 33 and Comcast 20 Power Talk. You are listening to WHPR 88.1 FM, and you are watching UHF TV 33 and Comcast 20 Power Talk. Now back to a scriptural discussion with the Son of Man. Uh... Yeah, that song was saying something. If it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we like to we like to make everything bear us witness, so that people don't say uh, we uh, don't fulfill what's written. Um. As the uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, told people that uh, the, that I would be uh, filled with wisdom enough to make everything bear me with. Me. He said, and then he makes you and me bow with that this is the judgment. you notice, did you ever hear any uh, in the last interview, lasted almost two hours, did you hear him at any time able to put an argument against me in anything I said? And it wasn't because I didn't let him. I said it, and if he ever stopped me, I stopped. Didn't I? And whatever he asked me, I answered his question. Is that right? Many people think that I'm supposed to be afraid to own up to uh, what I say. Man said, well, you say you God. I didn't say I was God. They said that. 
I didn't know who I was. You know, and it's just like you. People say, man, your name, uh, uh, such and so. You had nothing to do with naming yourself. <laughs> your, your mama and them named you. Your mama and your daddy named you. Huh? I didn't have nothing to do with calling myself the son of man. That's what the word of God called me. He said, son of man, I have made you a watchman. When I have made him complete and breathed into him of my spirit, so if you don't like me calling myself the son of man, you take that up with the one who told me to call myself that. You didn't make me. Which of y'all taught me? Come on in here and own up to it. Tell everybody I got all of this from you. And if you didn't have nothing to do with me uh, growing into this knowledge, why are you objecting to me referring to myself by the name and title that the one who caused me to grow into this told me to call myself? If I don't say I'm not, let me show you how they try to get me in a catch-22. If I don't say I'm the son of man, you know what they'll be saying next? I don't see nowhere where it say nothing about you. It say the son of man. Okay. Okay, well, now that I'm the son of man, I'm not, I'm not coming to you with something that I changed to. I've been telling you I'm the son of man ever since you've known me. I just used to did not, uh, back in the 70s, I used to did not uh, teach my followers to just call me son of man. But Allah revealed to me that you let them call you what you are. And if they don't want to refer to you as that, let them go on. Because they see in my word that I uh, call you son of man. The messengers of God that came before you, they call you son of man. Then you answer to that so that you don't later on be called on the carpet by them for not saying that. If you don't tell them that, then they got excuse. So, so I'm Satisfied. I'm not just, uh, as those saying, go talking the talk. I'm walking the walk. I didn't hide from you. I let you bring whoever you wanted in here to talk to me, and I did not ask you for no uh, pre discussion. You notice, he could not say nothing when I told him, look, uh, there's a sign to you right here. I'm talking to you with a 12th grade education, and you wouldn't have known it if I hadn't told you. So obviously something else going on in my head. You see? But that fulfills but. When he was 12, he was in the temple talking with his elders, <laughs> who marveled at his wisdom. That's right. What do you mean marvelous? How do you know they marvelous? Because they couldn't argue with him. You don't have to tell me you marveling over what I'm saying to you. You're not arguing with me. you got to be marveling over the fact. Hey, this man getting all this from How about it, Clyde? <laughs> and you see how down to earth we are with it? You know, I don't, you know, I don't uh, walk around here trying to flaunt nothing. 
I'm just being me. You see? My teacher told me, he said, accept your own and be yourself. That's it. I accept the scriptures, and I'm being myself. They are my own. You know? I remember that little story of the ugly duckling. He looked down one day and discovered that he was one of them beautiful birds that he used to admire. And all his life he'd been made fun of by those who he thought he was, and he was not. And he was busy admiring them beautiful swans and looked down one day and saw one of them looking back at him. And he took off with who he really was. So I take off with the messengers of God, for I'm one of them. Not only am I one of them, I'm the head of them. So he said, no longer the tail, but the head. That's what the messenger said. <laughs> that you followed me, son of man. He said, but I'm supposed to be following you. <laughs> That's right. So all of them, they follow me now, whether so ever I go. They follow the lamb, whether so ever he go. That's right. They even follow me when they say, if ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> you heard that brother in there quoting Matthew? Quoting Revelation? Huh? Now, if you want to find that song, it's uh, if it ain't one thing, it's another. It's on YouTube. You can go on there and Pull it up, put it through your speakers, and you'll see it's got a nice tone, got a nice, nice rhythm to it. And brother saying something there. So, huh? By Richard Dimple Fields. Richard Dimple's Fields. See, I had never heard of him. And I had never heard of uh, Barack Obama either, and he wound up being president. How many of y'all heard of him before he became president? That's my point. All kind of, all kind of new people just popping all up. And you don't know nothing about them. Next thing you know, you're finding out they somebody. You know, I was told one of the brothers told me that uh, that album "Let's Stay Together" by Al Green done, done took off and sold some more copies now. Because the president sung a few notes out there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, he picked the right song. That, that Let's stay together. Huh? Yeah. That song saying something, man. But, uh, you know, we need to get together. That's right. You, my people. Do you not see that I'm one of your, one out of all of your black leaders that don't nobody, ain't nobody able to come up here and point out that he don't know what he's talking about? Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to say that in the exclusion of, but President Obama, he's uh, the president of the United States. And he and I, we have different jobs. You understand? See. So I I don't say that to belittle him because that's a long way from being a, a, a little laughing. And I don't want you to ever think that I belittle that office or anyone who take it. There's Moses. He didn't belittle Pharaoh's office or his position. He even said, who am I? To go to Pharaoh. I remember the messengers. He even said when talking about proud people. He said now. He said now. You can't reach the top of mountains in your height. Nor can you go step to the earth. Through the earth. So the mountains is even taller than you. And the earth is deeper than you. He said, and not a one of us is the president of the United States. 
Now, what that tell you he thought about that position? Well, one of us is the president <laughs> of the United States now, so I got a little more pep in my step. Uh, you know, it makes me feel proud to see, a, 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 you know, white people. I know how they felt to look up and see their brother over the greatest nation that ever uh, existed up to this point. He couldn't help but feel proud that someone who looked like him was the leader of the free world. Huh? And he's in the country that every other country envies. Headed up by him. Well, okay. You heard, uh, uh, what's his name? What's that uh, actor's name that they tried to get to run for governor? Alex Baldwin. Alex Baldwin. He gave the president his, his dues. He said the president... President Obama has reestablished respectability, you know, regained respectability uh, with the other nations of the earth for America and for the office of president. And you can't take that from him. And, uh, you know, I mean, people try to make it look like the man ain't did nothing. You, I mean, look, this ain't just me saying this because he's black. Yes, I'm glad he's black. But look what's going down now, going on in the Gulf of Mexico now. BP's still there. The president said he's going to hold BP responsible, and they're going to have to handle the business here. And you see them commercials with BP still there helping them clean up that mess. And you ain't heard no complaints from New Orleans. Uh, Governor Christie ain't had nothing negative to say about the Obama administration as far as helping get uh, what, what, what uh, uh, state is he in? New Jersey. And Joplin, Missouri, they ain't had one cry against the administration and how they dealing with the, the, the rebuilding of Joplin and stuff like that. Why don't you give the man credit? And the Congress ain't, ain't supported uh, most of what the president was trying to do to Congress, he had to do it with executive orders and stuff like that because the Congress wouldn't help him. Then you want to holler, he's responsible for the bad economy. Everybody know who's responsible for America losing its AAA credit rating? The president didn't do that. Them crooks in Congress did that. So if you're going to tell it, tell it like it is. Come on, we want our country back. That's what they say. We want our country back. Why did you give it to the black man in the first place? Why did you give that position to that man? so that you could try to make him look like he was responsible for all of the, the stuff that had went wrong when you was responsible. And now that he's getting it together with the help of some intelligent white people, showing you what could happen if you just get together under sane leadership, under someone who really care about the country instead of fattening their own pockets. What do you mean you want the country back? The country's still yours. But you want to re-wreck it, huh? Ain't they saying they want to roll back all of them uh, things that he did to stop Wall Street from doing that again? They want to roll that back? They want to roll back health care? Regardless of the fact that people are out of work, ain't got no means of... of uh, paying doctor bills and all that kind of stuff, he want to roll back health care. And the president already said that every state has the right to opt out of that national health care thing. Ain't nobody forcing you to do nothing. But because he's actually helping the people. Why, why ain't nobody asking, are you 
Are you better off now or worse off now than you was four years ago? And you know, I could understand you accusing that man if Congress had gave that man everything he asked for. But you saw, and I saw, the news media showed you that everything that man was trying to do, they fought against him. Wouldn't cooperate with him on nothing. Go tell him he needs to come here and show us a plan. You ain't never heard the Congress tell no president no foolishness like that. That man was elected to the executive office of the United States of America. I know what the CEO of a corporation does. He give orders and people follow them. Jimmy Carter said it like it is. He said, I had cooperation from both sides of the aisle. President Obama has not gotten cooperation on nothing. He says, nothing but racism. You know it, and I know it. You better grow up, boy. You better grow up quicker than I heard. Now, I'm uh, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to offer you, you know, salvation. But I'm telling you, the next time we call them hurricanes and stuff in here. It ain't going to be no turning back. You're going to find out that it ain't like you think. The same way you ain't never heard no black man stand up out in here in front of you and put himself out here like you see me do. That alone should tell you that I'm not the same as them that you used to dealing with. And you got an opportunity here to heal yourself. You got an opportunity here to change your destiny. That's what I'm here for, to help you change. As in, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. And I am the last trump for you. The last one, you done seen men come to you. Let's, let's talk about cards. You like to call, you remember when they was after Saddam Hussein and all of them? They had the king of hearts and this and then that. And they, you know, they call them cards, right? Okay. Well, the, you, you done seen uh, the Jesus, Moses, David, Solomon, all of those great messengers of God. They have all come at different points in time. And you've seen the last one, Elijah. The trump of God is the messenger of God. Well, they all prophesied that the Lord himself will come. Not somebody saying the spirit of the Lord is on me, but the Lord himself shall come. Who you think I am? I'm either nothing or I'm the Lord. Now, now if I ain't nothing, why don't you come in here and make quick work of me and show that I ain't nothing by manifesting your wisdom that shows that what I'm teaching is nothing.
You either going to change or you're going down. Did you hear what I said? You're going to either change or you're going down. But it ain't going to be business as usual. You know, that's the one thing that you shouldn't have no objection to. Because that's the one constant that's in the universe. Change. Yeah? That's the constant thing that's steady going on. Day changes in the night. Huh? The young changes into the old. Huh? Change. Weather changes from hot to cold. There's another song that said that everything must change. Okay. Now, uh, I haven't went into a whole lot of scriptures today because of the interview. I wanted to be interviewed by a man who's been, you know, in other people's camps and considered himself an authority. And he found out that, you know, not as much an authority as he thought. Huh? You notice, ain't nobody correcting me, telling me that the Nation of Islam's birth bracket is uh, July 4th, 1930. That's no such a thing. That ain't never was taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And if you teaching that, you teaching something that he did not say nor agree with. The first lesson tell you there ain't no birth record. Huh? If he uh, said that and then agreed that uh, 1930, July 4th was the birth record, then, uh, then he, his teaching would uh, not be true. Because that lesson would be wrong. He gave us that lesson. He the one taught us when Master Farad Muhammad came to America. And he's the one gave us the lesson. What is the birth record of the said nation of Islam? It got no birth record. Why? Because it has no beginning nor ending. It can't be born until it, the head comes. How do, how do human beings, as Allah said, your creation or your raising is only like that of what? Where's that at? Let's, let's, let's make it clear. As they used to say in the temple, make it plain. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 28, verse 51. Chapter 28 in the Holy Quran and uh, verse 51, brother say. It says, Twenty-eight and fifty-one. Did he say fifty-one or sixty-one? Chapter thirty-one, verse what? Why didn't you say something? Thirty-one and what? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. The thirty-first chapter and the twenty-eighth verse. It says your creation, or, in other words, your raising, is only like. A single soul. Now, how are children born? How do they come here? They come here head first. If he if he come in feet first, the doctor had to reach up in there and turn him around. Is that right? 
You don't want them feet to hit that air for you because that baby going to wake up and suffocate. Is that right? So he turned him around. He don't want no breech birth. They call it breech, right? What is that what they call it, the breech birth when they're coming in wrong? Yeah. Okay. They turn him around. Let the head get here first. Well, the birth record of the said nation of Islam had no birth record because the head of it ain't got here yet. The Lord is the beginning and the end. Huh? So the messenger knew what he was talking about. Then when the Lord comes, now you will see the nation come because every member in it has to be taught directly by the Lord. And if they don't want to do what the Lord says, they can't be part of the nation. He said, now I say he has arrived. He said, he said, he don't trust nobody else to teach them. He said, I will teach them myself. That's right. I'm teaching them myself. I done seen what happened when you let us. The messenger told me, he said, let me show you what happened when you let everybody teach. And he showed me. Then I look out. You see what happened when I wasn't here no more? Every one of them decided he's going to go off on his own. Every one of them decided that he'd be given pages spread out. They didn't believe when the, the messenger told them, he said, ain't nobody, nobody didn't say except Farrakhan. He said, nobody. Uh, you, let's see here. Let's see, uh, we, we like to, we like to give it, make it plain. Let's see here. I, I like to uh, make sure that we make it plain for people. You know, get to talking about, well, I don't know about that. So let's see. Let us get back again at the time. If the Bible teaches you that the devil will have the power of the people to rule until God come and destroy him. This is true. And that God prepared hell for him and the day that he was made. Think over that. Before ever the man was made, hell was prepared for him. Now, if the Bible teaches you that, Christian believers, why you want to go along with it? This is designation is hell. But you say, I don't know when that will be. Neither do you. No one is given that hour but God himself. And then he passes it over to that angel that you read of in the Revelation that places one foot on water and one on land. The preachers used to fancy in that of course, they didn't get too far from the truth. They used to say that they, he w and the angel would ask God, how loud must I sound? He's making a little fancy there. I used to hear my father preach it. And he put fancy to it because he didn't know. But today all fancy, our fancy is removed. And the light of the truth must shine so clear that you cannot claim there was a cloud between you and it. This is the little boy that is talking to you now. There is nobody coming behind me but God. I better tell you that. That is talking to you now. There is nobody coming behind me but God. 
I better tell you that. That is talking to you now. There is nobody coming behind me but God. I better tell you that. So you're not going to get away with uh, acting like you don't know? He said, ain't nobody coming behind me but God. I better tell you. Do that sound like my ministers are going to take over? Then he said, ain't nobody coming behind me but the national secretary. Ain't nobody coming behind me but the national spokesman. He said, ain't nobody coming behind me but God. I better tell you that. Why did he say, I better tell you that? Because he saw what they was going to be doing. He already said that they didn't want no leadership. He said, you don't want no leadership. He said, you are a crazy people. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, no, you play crazy. You don't, you don't remember. Yeah, I know you. You you like to when the messenger said, I know this ain't nobody coming in here telling me he didn't say these things. Let's see here. Let me see here. Um let's go here and see if this is it. There is much I want to talk with you about, but I must not forget to tell you this. I don't go to the nations of the East to get something from them for myself. I get that for you. And now you are spreading all over the path that I've been trying to make for you absolutely destroying because you want to be the big boy for yourself. Just like you destroyed the nation because you want to be the big boy for yourself. You don't want the leadership that was fashioned and raised to guide you. You don't want me. And it ain't a one of you, all of you put together, ain't got enough sense to overcome me. I can say it and I can absolutely prove it. Come on in here. Listen to him. He's fussing at him, and you should be able to hear a pin drop. But listen. And you are making yourself the little boy. What I have been told that you are trying to do, where well, I have gone along, I feel like a ostrich. want to hide my head in this sand for your foolish act. As soon as I went and begin to talk, trade for you with Japan, you hustle there. Want to try to get a private trade for yourself. Such foolish people. <laughs> Throughout the country, there is little clusters of groups of my people here trying to trail me everywhere that I go to get a self-business with the people. If I would go to Russia, you go in there. I can get into Russia today for you if I wanted to. But I respect the American government. I won't go and grab that in. 
to help me. I don't need them. And the very one doing the clapping is the one doing it. In his way, he told him, we will fix you. But as God told me, they won't do nothing, meaning you, but makes you ashamed. Now, is there any doubt of who he is talking to? He said, as God told me, he said, they won't be do nothing, meaning you, but make you shame. And he said, you make me shame. Listen. You make me shame. I'm trying to make it good and, and easy for you with the nation of the earth who knows me. And you comes along and kicks everything over for self. You want something for self. You don't want nothing. Well, why didn't you go in front of me? Trifling, just trifling, Negro. Don't take the messenger's teaching and use them against the messenger. He said, do something for self. I mean, now I'm God. <laughs> little ungrateful, little ungrateful wretch. didn't have a pot to make water in or a window to throw it out of when they met the messenger. Then he put you in a position where you could be honored and respected as a nation of people and you wasn't satisfied until you trashed everything he did for you. And now you're angry at me for standing up here admonishing you about what you did. You notice, ain't none of them can come in here and say I'm lying on them. Listen. This is what. You are done for the good thing that I'm trying to set up for you. Coming along behind me, asking the people to deal with you. You are the most sinless people ever lived on earth. You don't want no leadership. The Holy Quran teaches me that. But every one of you wanted pages spread out for yourself. Ah. What is that? You don't want no leadership. That's why you got all these little sycophants walking around here talking about, I'm God. How come you didn't say that to the messenger? Which you did say it in your heart. That's why you were doing everything except what he told you to do. No, don't worry. They ain't going to come in here and say nothing. Those that left alive, because it's written, do they not see we have sent death among them? What happened to the Israelites that would not accept Moses? He let them wander around in the wilderness for how long? Forty years. You know how long I've been teaching? Since 1973. Officially since 75. Huh? That's 37 years, ain't it? See you.
We are not going to be overcome by you. It's written, we are not to be overcome. Let you wander around till all of you die. Then we take the children. I'm not going to beg you. You're ungrateful, sir. Took all the good that that man did for you and threw it in the trash, following an impudent child. An ungrateful little fella that was raised up by his father and didn't have sense enough to honor his father. Yet he accepted the inheritance if I wasn't going to follow the man, I'd have told him, keep what you got. No, Daddy, I don't agree with you. And I don't want to. You just cut me out of that. I don't want nothing to do with something that you got that I feel is ill-gotten. The messenger said, we don't want one penny from you that's an unjust penny. Huh? But yet he come in there pretending that he believed. Huh? And the minute you found out that he didn't believe, why didn't you walk off? Why didn't you leave him? Matter of fact, why didn't you boot his behind out of there? And he said it. Well, I couldn't go in there and tell them that all that was a lie. They threw me out of there. They ran me out of there. And I don't blame them. <laughs> so what he did? He stood up there and confessed to tricking you. But if he had known, really, he didn't have to trick you. You already didn't believe in the messenger. You just wanted the money and the good homes. The hell with friendship. You didn't want no friendship. You, a, a man that don't know how to be a true friend ain't interested in no true friendship. And how can you going to be a true friend when you was lying, pretending to believe in the messenger of God when you didn't. You heard a lot of them come out. I knew that was, I knew that was wrong. I just knew it. Then why was you hanging out? And if it was so wrong then, why don't you come in here and tell me what's wrong with it? Hypocrite. He wants to take the book that Allah had given the messenger with all the knowledge therein to teach you. You grab it and go to try to teach it yourself without the knowledge. Keeping the blind, blind, and the deaf, deaf. That dumb without a language of justice and righteousness. You are a crazy people. Nobody wants you but God and myself. You miss. Just think of what God himself did about you when he found you. You're so silly. He didn't want to shame and disgrace himself. I will give them to you, Elijah, if you can do anything with them. <laughs> Believe it or not, I am your greatest friend. Your wicked devil theologian. They'll bear me witness that yes, you the one, that if they don't follow, they goes with us. That's a hundred and five percent the truth. If you don't follow me, God won't accept you. And the world have already turned you down. For nothing but 
fuel for fire. I know you don't believe me, but stick around. As he said, if you don't follow me, he said, and he's talking about himself, God won't accept you. And the world have already turned you down. You'll notice how quick I turn you down when you don't accept what the messengers of God said before me. You start telling me you don't believe what Jesus had to say. I don't want to. Me and you ain't got nothing else to conversate about. Don't stop. Because I take you notice that you come in there trying to tell me he don't go for the gospel. I said, well, what do you believe in? Well, we believe in everything up to Malachi. Well, okay. Malachi prophesied of Elijah coming. Huh? Before the Lord. You talking about you not looking for no one man. The scripture said that the Lord is coming. And it didn't say put no S on it. The Lord's a coming. Then he got mad and left. You don't care. You're a liar. I quote that what he claimed to believe in, and he don't believe in that. Don't tell me when I told him. Look. Don't y'all leave a place at the table for Elijah? Well, we don't leave no place for him. We leave a cup for him. How you got a cup at the table and ain't got no place? You gonna make him reach over somebody to get to the cup? I didn't say that. I didn't listen at this liar. He didn't, he's upset because I knew something about his uh, religion that he didn't think I knew. You understand? <laughs> But I know a whole lot more than you think I know. And you know a whole lot less than you think you know. Just, just keep on. You, you, uh, I remember my daddy used to say that. Keep on, yeah. yeah. And I knew what that meant. That meant he going to grab me after a while. It's a terrible thing to fall into the grip of the Almighty. You know, you had better stop yourself. Just like I've been done better to stop myself than my daddy had to grab me. Because if he grabbed me, he wasn't going to just grab me. Yeah. Something else was coming. That extension card was was coming along with that grass. We bring hell on you in extended collar. You're going to understand what that's talking about when you see one after another, didn't you? And I'm talking about one calamity after another. That ain't going to let up until there ain't no more you. And I'm telling you, you better, you better take this uh, grace that you've been given by the grace of thy Lord. Thou art not man. You ain't never seen so many young and old people losing their minds. Somebody they got Alzheimer's and bipolars and all this kind of stuff. And that ain't just the, that's not just getting people exclusively who are unjust. That's that stuff coming on from everybody. That's why I love fix it where you could have a little medication that would help alleviate some of the symptoms of it. That's to, for people that it's happening to because they got some of the fallout from it. You, but I'm telling you, you're in a terrible time. I'll always send a mercy. He sends a mercy because certain things, it happens like when it rains. It rains on the just and the unjust. 
But the unjust, he won't even let them take their medicine. He they turned their mind into not taking that shelter that he put there for them. Yeah. Never, never take for granted that you it's you that think to do what's best for you. That's Allah putting it in your mind to do what's best for you. You know, that's right. You know, you you got some people that you can offer good food to, and they'll turn you down. That's right. They would rather have some garbage. So, blessed are those that uh, really do and are really hungry and thirsty for righteousness. You're going to be filled. It's written, they shall be filled. Yeah. I'm here to fill you with the Holy Spirit. I'm here to baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost. You see, that's right. He makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. I'm here to baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so you, uh, you know, ain't nobody arguing and telling me what I am. They used to used to try. And then when I make them show me in the scripture where they get their argument from, they go there and try to get Jesus to help them, and they find out Jesus only helped me. They go and try to get Moses, they find out Moses only helped me. If they go and get any of the messengers of God, they find out that the messengers of God won't help you against me. You can't go get Elijah's teaching and fight me with it. No, sir. <laughs> he simply told you, ain't nobody coming behind me but God. I better tell you that. Why? So when the Son of Man get here and get on you for following all these other people, I, when you try to justify them through me, I don't care what you heard me say before, ain't nobody coming behind me but God. That's what he said. I better tell you that. All right, so don't come asking me. Because all I'm going to do is send you back to the one that you're trying to get away from. He's my Lord. I am his Lord. I'm all of them's Lord. <laughs> and I, I suffered death so I could be the Lord of the dead and the living. That's right. You can't rule over what you don't understand. I understand death. That's how I got the key to it. The key to anything is understanding. You see? People who haven't been dead can't understand a dead man. They don't know what your problem is. You are not normal to them. Don't nobody come here to America and, and look at you and me that can sympathize with our condition because they ain't suffered our condition. That's why they don't care how they treat you. They uh, do anything to you and say you deserve it because the way you act. They don't know that you, the way you are acting is because of the way you've been treated for the past 400 years. And they don't even care to listen to nobody explain it to them, which is getting them in trouble with the one who's here to save you. And, uh, well, if you can't help my people, you do well to get on out of our community. I'm telling you, you don't know what you're doing. You're making yourself my enemy. And if I'm your enemy, Allah is your enemy. I repeat, if I'm your enemy, Allah is your enemy. And he's the wrong one to have for an enemy. You see? You come in our community and you, you mistreat us. You look down on us. 
and you don't care what we've been through. But you expect us to have sympathy for what your, you suffering in your little uh, country or whatever that you left to come here for. I know it's late, so I'm going to stop right now. But I will continue this with you in a half hour from now. The number to the conference room that you can get into in a half hour, uh, I'll be back in there. That number is area code 712-432-0075. Again, that's area code 712-432-0075. The access code is 912-932, followed by the pound key. Again, that's 912-932, followed by the pound key. And I will meet you in the conference room at half hour. Until then, may Allah bless us all, keep us safe, and in our right mind. Uh,